Since the early 1980s, people have been noticing some really strange looking iguanas on the South Plaza Island. These iguanas seem to be a mix between land and marine iguanas. How did these hybrid iguanas come to be? In the animal kingdom, a species is a group of individuals who can mate and have offspring that can survive. They are also isolated from other groups of animals. This isolation is like a boundary that separates species from each other. There are certain physical and behavioral characteristics that prevent individuals from mating with the wrong species. You see, mating can be a big deal for animals. It takes a lot of energy, and if they mate with the wrong partner, it can affect their chances of reproducing and even their own survival. Let me give you an example. Have you ever seen these beautiful blue-footed birds? When a pair of these creatures wants to get romantic, they perform these elaborate dances. During these dances, both birds check each other out to see if they're a good match. They also pay attention to how well their partner can dance. Now, if a bird from a different species tried to dance with them in hopes of mating, chances are they'd be ignored or even worse, chased away or hurt. Regardless, in some cases, the boundaries between species get crossed. And this happens more often than you might think. In fact, when different species mate and have offspring, those little ones can sometimes give rise to a whole new type of animal. These new animals are different from their parents and become a unique subspecies or even a new species altogether. This is exactly what seems to have happened with the mockingbirds on Genovisa Island. Their genetic makeup strongly suggests that there was an interaction between two mockingbird species. Despite their mixed heritage, these Genovisa mockingbirds are perfectly happy reproducing with each other. The same goes for the finches on Daphne Major. Scientists have seen finches from different species mating for the past 20 years. Many of the giant tortoises on Isabella Island are actually hybrids or descendants of hybrids too. A less famous but still fascinating example of interspecies mating, the land iguanas and marine iguanas on South Plaza. These hybrids were first spotted in 1981, and since then, park rangers and tour guides have reported a few more instances of iguana hybridization. These hybrids have a unique appearance with a mix of dirty yellow and dark gray colors. Their head scales are a bit different too, falling somewhere between the scales of land iguanas and marine iguanas. Scientists have confirmed through genetic analysis that these peculiar creatures are indeed hybrids with equal amounts of DNA from both types of reptiles. But what remains a mystery is why these birds have only been found on South Plaza. After all, there are plenty of other islands where both land iguanas and marine iguanas live together. One possible explanation could be that South Plaza is a tiny island. Because of its small size, the two reptile species have more chances to interact and mate. There are other puzzling questions as well. For example, it's unclear if these hybrids only eat vegetation found on land. So far, none of them have been seen going into the water, suggesting that they might have a metabolism more similar to land iguanas. Another interesting observation is that all the studied South Plaza hybrids have a marine iguana father and a land iguana mother, rather than the other way around. Scientists are still trying to figure out why this is the case, and they've come up with two main hypotheses. In both types of reptiles, males are territorial and use elaborate head bobbing and posturing to establish dominance among their fellow males and attract females. Once a hierarchy is established, the most dominant males get to control and prevent others from interacting with the ladies. However, in marine iguanas, even less dominant males have a chance to become parents by adopting a satellite strategy. They hang out at a distance from the main group and sometimes get the chance to get romantic. It's possible that hybrid iguanas on South Plaza are the result of these satellite marine males occasionally directing their mating efforts 
towards the reptiles they find on land instead. It also may be the case that it's the females making the choice. Some land iguanas might actively choose to mate with males from the sea who seem to be the flashiest in terms of their looks and behavior. Although the exact mechanisms behind these hybrids are not yet fully understood, one thing is clear. The hybrid iguanas on South Plaza appear to be infertile. Unlike other mixed creatures, these South Plaza hybrids cannot pass on their mixed genes to future generations. This means they won't give rise to a new subspecies or species. However, they still hold great significance for scientific research. Other hybrids are even more fascinating. Scientists recently conducted DNA analysis to provide evidence for the existence of a remarkable one known as the narluga, a fascinating combination of a beluga whale and a narwhal, often referred to as the unicorn of the sea. For many years, scientists had a hunch about the narluga's existence. That's because some identified skeletons did not fit the description of either narwhals or belugas. They possessed gray skin, flippers resembling those of belugas, and tails resembling those of narwhals. The most peculiar feature of these mystery creatures was their teeth. Belugas possess 40 teeth used for capturing fish, while narwhals are nearly toothless and rely on suction to feed. The mystery skull, however, exhibited 18 teeth, all located at the front of the mouth, and some of them had spiral patterns similar to a narwhal's tusk. Nearly three decades later, scientists begin to analyze the DNA extracted from those teeth. The results confirmed what they had suspected long ago. The skull belonged to a narwhal beluga hybrid, the first confirmed case of its kind. In general, scientists possess limited knowledge about the mating habits of belugas and narwhals. Both species spend a big chunk of each year concealed within densely packed sea ice, making it challenging for researchers to observe their behaviors. Sure, the narluga may seem weird, but it does join a long list of documented hybridizations between various species of whales and dolphins. A study conducted in 2016 reported nearly 20 instances of such hybrids. Now, does the recent discovery of the narluga mean a new species is born? Scientists say, not really. For the narluga to establish itself as a distinct species, these hybridizations would need to occur repeatedly over an extended period of time. Additionally, the offspring resulting from these pairings would have to be able to reproduce themselves, an aspect that isn't always guaranteed with hybrids. Regardless, hybridization can even play a crucial role in the evolution of a species, even for us humans. On that note, around 60,000 years ago, something extraordinary happened. A Neanderthal lady and a Denisovan gentleman crossed paths and produced a unique child with a blend of their DNA. Researchers made an exciting announcement about a bone fragment that confirms this finding. This fragment contains the genetic material of that remarkable hybrid child, serving as a precious window into the captivating history of human evolution. Let's travel back to Denisova Cave, nestled in the stunning Altai Mountains. This cave has become a true treasure trove for anthropologists due to its rich history. Over a hundred thousand years, it has been home to various groups of humans, including Denisovans, Neanderthals, and modern humans. Surprisingly, the remains of all three species have been discovered within its depths. Now here's where it gets even more fascinating. Denisova Cave is the only place where evidence of the enigmatic Denisovan people has been found. As it turns out, these individuals were closely related to both Neanderthals and modern humans. However, it seems that the story of their separation did not end there. Recent analyses of ancient DNA have revealed something astounding. Neanderthals, Denisovans, and modern humans engaged in interbreeding within Eurasia. As a result, the genetic makeup of present-day humans carries traces of both Neanderthals and Denisovans. 
the discovery of the hybrid child stands as tangible proof of this intermingling.